I'm going to sit down with uh, Frank Kelly um, on this uh, second episode of Math Made Almost Bearable. We're going to talk about math and performance art. So today I want to talk uh, with my friend Jordan here about um, math and the idea of performing it. Uh, in the past, I've made the analogy between music and math, and if we think about it this way, music, you can be a conductor, you can be a composer, you can be a performer, you can be a teacher, you can be a student, or you can just be someone who's in the audience and enjoys the, listening to the music. In math, the thing that's really prized is the composition of math, the creation of new math. Of, of new uh, concepts in math. Then, of course, there's teaching math, not a <laughs> unproblematic subject. Uh, then there are the students who study math, and there are the students who perhaps just suffer through math class. There really, in my view, isn't anything like performance mathematics. Now, many math teachers are performers, and they are very lively and give terrific lectures, but their intent is to teach math. Their intent is not just to perform. What I like to think about, and what I think I've done in my life more than I ever realized, was to take these, these theorems, these techniques, these ideas in mathematics, and try to bring them to life the way you perform a piece of music. Now with with performance and with teaching in music, there seems like there's a really clear distinction there. Um, but how is that distinction made in in the classroom uh, with mathematics? Because in high school, I I hated most of my math teachers. I didn't want to watch them perform math at all because if they were performing math, it, it meant they were going to give me some homework and then I was going to have to perform some math. <laughs> ah, good point. I, I'm not so much interested in the students thinking that they have to do the performance. Uh, many people say, in ma many professional mathematicians, would like to say that math is an art and that it's filled with works of art. Well, if it is, it seems to me it's an art more like music or, uh, or, uh, or perhaps literature, which can really benefit from being, like I love to listen to literature being read or, or a play being performed. So if we make the analogy between theater and music on, on one side and math on the other. Uh, you can read a play, but it's nothing like watching it being performed. Is that what most students end up doing? They end up just reading the play in the classroom in some ways? Well, that's what I think, I, it, because most of the time math isn't, isn't performed. And the other thing is, when it is performed, it's still always performed in this context of teaching it. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in something more like performing it so that people can appreciate that it's beautiful. They may not feel obligated to learn it or reproduce it or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, or to even understand uh, something technical that's going on behind the scenes, maybe, but to appreciate the beauty of the thought as it's brought to life. That's my goal. For lay people, people who aren't in the university setting, uh, what does it mean to be an audience of mathematics? Well, I think right now it doesn't mean anything. I, I, <laughs> I don't think that exists. Um, we, we have it in the sciences. We have people who watch a, a, a video of Carl Sagan or, or Stephen Gould. Or maybe I should mention somebody who's still alive. Uh, but other, <laughs> other people who are very good, uh, Brian Greene, for instance, very good at making science come to life without expecting everybody to understand all of the details or the or maybe to have mastery. Mm -hmm. But after they've seen the performance, they have an appreciation of the subject. Boy, those physicists are cool. Yeah. And we haven't done that yet. Yeah, that, well, I mean, that's always been my experience, uh, especially with things in popular science. I mean, if someone brings up quantum mechanics, uh, I mean, that seems really, really big and far out, far out there. Uh, it seems really cool, actually. And someone, someone once came up to me and, and uh, they, they brought up this Schrodinger's cat, and they said, did, did you know that quantum mechanics proves that, that cats can be dead and alive at the same time? And you think, well, that's really, that's really weird. Let's talk about that. That's a really neat idea. Um, that's not the kind of thing that gets, that gets brought up in mathematics. Or at least, you know, I, I never notice anybody saying anything about Gödel's theorem, or um, which is more logic, or, or the Chinese remainder theorem. Or I mean, it doesn't really get much past the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, one one difficulty is math is always presented in this really laboriously linear way, mm -hmm. so that if you haven't mastered a whole bunch of ideas in previous courses, you're almost not allowed entry mm -hmm. into the more advanced courses. Yeah, which is not the case at all. Performing music. I mean, I can go to a, a symphony orchestra. I mean, I don't I don't have to know anything about music. And, and you don't have to have already mastered Bach and Mozart before you're allowed <laughs> to listen to Beethoven. See? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, what I said before, I, I don't mean that we should drop the prerequisites for courses in math. I'm not talking about education. <laughs> but we should be able to talk about interesting ideas in all aspects of mathematics insofar as we can uh, and, and, and show the beauty of them. Uh, now, some people maybe can't appreciate a certain theorem because it is too connected to other things that come before. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you could. Mm -hmm. You could say, boy, that's just so neat. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'd like to do. Create both an audience and a bunch of performers. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you see yourself fitting into this, this model? Well, I, I want to be, a, I've had a long career teaching mathematics. I want to become pretty much just a math performer. I want to make little videos of me performing <laughs> things in mathematics that I think are beautiful, throwing it out there, and hope that somebody looks at it and says, boy, that math could be cool. All right, thanks again, Frank. Thank you, George. Appreciate you sitting down on the second episode of Math Made Almost Bearable, um, and we'll be back for, for more later. Thanks. On the next episode of Math Made Almost Bearable, we're going to talk about President Garfield's proof of the Pythagorean theorem. He wasn't president yet when he did it, and he did get assassinated. I hope it wasn't for proving the Pythagorean theorem. But next time, I'll show you his beautiful, simple proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Bye-bye. See you next time.